Okay. All right, everyone take a deep breath. <sighs> Got me pot. Okay. Madonna, 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 <laughs> Madonna. Um, Chris, whenever you're ready. You're listening to MLVC, the Madonna podcast, your place for all things Madonna, Louise, Veronica, Ciccone. Hey, everybody, it's Chris. Hey, everybody, it's Liberty. Tell me how we got this far. Every man for himself. Oh, where's that one from? Ghost Town. Oh, <laughs> oh see, I... I thought you were going to be doing classic Madonna because of today's episode. You like to I, I switch mean, it up, Liberty. You, you just, just you keep can't me on my toes. She's relevant to today, so. I know, it's true. Uh, hey, everybody, it's Stefan. Welcome to another edition of MLVC. Joining myself in Liberty today is Chris Vasquez, who was my Madonna BFF at her Harlem gig last fall. Chris, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. This is my very first podcast, so... Oh, like a virgin. Mm. Like, exactly. Mm. <laughs> very first time. I, I wanted to know, Chris, have you yet recovered from our Madonna experience in Harlem? No. I have daily dreams about walking down the street with her. It's incredible. Incredible. What a night. For those of you who didn't know, uh, Chris and I were lucky enough to be at that gig, and we were up close and personal, and marching through the streets with her and Jean Baptiste, uh, she literally took us to church. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was amazing. It was so awesome. It was great yeah, to be yeah. in the audience with Lola too. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, it was like and Stephen Klein and Lola and Ricardo, her social guy. It was lots of fun. Yeah. So you guys um, just basically blended in because you're as fabulous as all of them and so therefore it was like you just fit right in with her crew just i still want to know what happened to the the professional footage all we've seen from is like that little of us dancing in the audience yeah they got a lot of good footage of us in the in the front i'm i'm waiting for it where is it I'm, i'm gonna digress for a second speaking of church um on a completely out of left field commentary for the podcast I am now an ordained minister. Um, it's odd to even be able to say it. Uh, I have a lifelong friend I know who asked me to officiate her vows uh, for her and her partner. Uh, so thanks to the internet and thirty nine ninety nine plus shipping, I am now <laughs> a certified minister. Um, for anyone listening, I am available to be hired for any pride weddings or Madonna walking tours. Please just DM me. And uh, yeah. I totally, uh, I'm going to have you. Okay. This is my dream because I want to do this. I've wanted to for years. I want to have a Val renewal ceremony at Chicone <gasps> Vineyards in Northern Michigan. Oh. So I'm going to have you officiate. And can you do that? Can you, can you do it? Destination. Mm. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think I just have, I think you just have to pay the ah. the chirp. Oh look, Chris is holding up a bottle of Chaconi wine. Okay. You've got it's all the from the vineyard. That's so amazing. excellent. So well, have it. You, you've not drank it, you just look at it. Oh yeah. It does it's not touched. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we are really excited for today's show. We are officially kicking off a brand new segment. It's our Madonna Summer Movie Series. Each month this summer, we plan to highlight one of the holy trinity of Madonna's 80s movies. Uh, Naturally, we are kicking off the series with Desperately Seeking Susan. We are also going to do that much warned about deep dive of Shanghai Surprise and to round off the summer movie series uh, in honor of its 35th anniversary, we are going to be doing Who's That Girl in August. So watch out for those next two. But for today, uh, we are talking about the definitive Madonna movie, Desperately Seeking Susan, otherwise known as the movie where Madonna invented the selfie. Yes. Before we jump into some of the topics, Chris, where were you when uh, Desperately Seeking Susan came out? Did you watch it when you were a young lad, or did you have to catch it on reruns on VHS? I think I was nine when that movie came out. So I was in school. Um, (laughs) um, You know what? I don't... 
I don't remember seeing it when it came out. I think I saw it like a couple of years after. After the fact. Yeah. Um, what? I well, thought I, you're like, you look like you're like 25. How is that even possible <laughs> that you were alive when that movie came out? Oh, Liberty, I just met you and I love you already. <laughs> <laughs> we could be BFFs, but for real though, like explain. Is it MDNA skin? It must be. Uh, you know, I, I do use that frequently. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. The rose mist um, is heaven sent. Um, it's a filter I'm using on the screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need but, some of that. Um, and Liberty, what about you? When did you see Desperately Seeking Susan? Uh, I think it was in, actually, I didn't see it in the theater, I think, because I was probably about eight when that movie yeah. was really, it was 85, right? So yeah, seven, eight. I didn't go to the movie theater. I think I watched it in my living room back in the, um, Back in the old parental's house and uh, VHS, I'm pretty Mm -hmm. sure. I don't even know if we rented it or if it was one of those like... Cinemax or something. Well, I didn't have cable growing up, so I really don't remember how I would have watched it. You probably were watching your neighbor's television through the living room window, (laughs) right? You're just like, oh, the McCutcheons are watching Destiny Seeking Susan. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, um, it's po- no, I definitely remember it was like a big we had a big floor TV, you know, like one of those that sat on the floor oh, right. and the VH, the huge VHS player sat on top of that. And I, I do remember that. I remember her Bush. No, that's the wrong movie. Um, no, stop it. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, no, I, I, I had to have been about eight, seven, eight. I don't remember exactly how I got to see it, but I remember I was absolutely enthralled with the whole like. She doesn't know who she is, like the the whole <laughs> amnesia part. I think because I also used to watch a lot of soap operas, and so amnesia was, mm, I was very mm-hmm. familiar with that. And please do not judge me, but this is my favorite movie overall. Like, all of the movies in the world that are available for viewing, I like this no, one. So not just, not just a favorite Madonna movie, but it's like a favorite movie in general. Yes, and I know that that's maybe a little bit lame, but I'm okay with that. For those of you who may not have seen the movie Desperately Seeking Susan, shame on you, first shame of all. You. Right, but here's a, cute, uh, a few quick facts to bring you up to speed. Released in 1985, female-driven comedy drama written by Leora Barish and directed by Susan Seidelman starring Rosanna Arquette of course with Madonna set in New York City the plot uh, involves the interaction between two women a bored housewife and a bohemian con artist who both have a fascination with personal ads and this was the fifth highest grossing film of the year if you can imagine it grossed 27.3 million in the United States, and the New York Times named it one of the best films of 1985, and that is why it's my favorite film. Well, so we're going to have a little uh, Siskel and Ebert rebuttal. Chris, this is not one of your favorite Madonna movies, correct? Oh, God, Liberty, we were just becoming friends. (laughs) It's over. We're done. Um, So when Stefan asked me to do this podcast, I was forced to put my top five on paper, which I've never really done. You know, you always discuss, oh, I love this movie. I love that movie. But to put my top five, this was, this was my fifth. <gasps> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I know. But, um, I mean, it's still, it's still great. It's still an amazing movie. It's her being her first movie. She's amazing at it. Mm-hmm. In it. Yeah. I mean, she is playing herself, but, <laughs> um, but I think the, the movie overall is, is, Awesome, especially since it's directed and written by a woman, starring two women. I think that's the best part of the whole thing. Yeah, I, uh, I'm I'm siding with Liberty on this one. Desperately Seeking Susan is one of my favorite Madonna movies uh, for for many many reasons. Um, obviously, the wardrobe. There's the soundtrack. New York Iconic. City in the early Iconic. '80s. I mean, it's such a wonderful time capsule of an era that's like forever gone. Yeah. You know, like the the simple days of like when Madonna could actually walk down the street uh, in New York City by herself. So, for the purpose of our desperately seeking Susan appreciation episode, I'm just going to randomly select topics, and we're just going to chat about that. How does that sound? Sounds to both of great. You? I that's would love good. to Let's do it. Okay. So first, and we, we sort of just alluded to this, can we talk about the cast? Like, the mm. cast is so amazing in this movie. We've got, uh, you just said, Rosanna Arquette and Madonna, obviously. Okay. But then there's John Turturro, 
Laurie Metcalf, Aiden Quinn, Stephen Wright. And if you were to put that cast all together now, you wouldn't be able to afford the movie because it would just be the salaries would be way too much money. But it's like all of these people, like before they become these huge stars, um, who are some of your favorite people in the movie and why? Liberty. Oh, I mean, for sure. I I like a lot uh, Rosanna Arquette just because she's got this um, every woman sort of thing, you know, this it's very easy to identify, I think, um, with her character and with her I guess needs not really being met. I don't know. When I rewatched the movie, just thinking about getting ready for this, I was, I was really taken with how I could relate to Roberta, how I could relate. You're you're a repressed housewife. Is that what you're saying? You know, I work, but I mean, I get (laughs) there even, even still though, there's something about that where it's like, I want something more. Uh, So, and, and I could see myself a little bit in, in Roberta there. And of course I really, admire Rosanna Arquette particularly now she's uh has a very political voice which yeah, I she's like a good a good activist and a good uh a good ally wow here it is a message from Jim huh desperately seeking Susan keep the faith Tuesday 10 a.m Battery Park Gangway One love Jim who's Jim Oh, God, Susan gets tomorrow who's Susan you know these people no you see Jim follows Susan all over the country last January she was in Mexico City then then Seattle they send messages back and forth. That's how they hook up. Now they're in New York. Desperate. I love that word. It's so romantic. Everybody I know is desperate except you. I'm desperate. You? <laughs> sort of. Um, so, all right. So, great. So, we know Liberty sits alone in her kitchen eating birthday cake. Uh, Chris, <laughs> what about you? What are, who are some of your, who, who's one of your favorite characters in Desperately Seeking Susan besides Madonna? Lori Metcalf. Mm-hmm. Lori Metcalf. Lori <laughs> Metcalf. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it's a rom com, she's the calm, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> she is, she brings the comedy every single moment of that movie. And, she left in such an impression on me when she went from that to Roseanne. Mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. like, thank you. I love you. Thank you. I love you. Um, funny. I was just watching hacks last night yes. and she's on it. Yes. And I was like, wait, what? she's, she's still thriving from that, from, from then. I don't know if that was her first film or whatnot, but she is hysterical. Yeah. I agreed. Yeah. There, I just, I, one of the things I sort of loved about that movie is there's all these like weird characters mm-hmm. sp- sprinkled throughout the whole movie, you know, like yeah. you get these, like all of the prostitutes, you know, like when Roberta gets arrested and she gets thrown in the back seat and she finally remembers who she is. And, you know, and there's the, the prostitutes that she meets in the back of the cab or like all of the crazy, like the cigarette woman in mm. the the magic club or like Susan's best friend who lets her crash at her yeah. apartment, you know, only seven mm. digit phone calls. And <laughs> there's just like so many crazy little characters who have these like rich backstories that we never even get to hear about. Um, it's such a romanticized movie of New York, you know, like they make New York seem so mysterious and wonderful and also like, dangerous Mm -hmm. and off-putting at the same time you know like it's amazing how like you want to be there but then nothing but bad things are happening to these people you know like like poor roberta's being stalked and banging her head and it's like i have a fun fact about the cigarette girl but we can talk about that during the soundtrack portion oh okay okay. (laughs) Okay. um well so you chris you brought up uh laurie metcalf and i that was going to be one of my next things i wanted to bring about what's everyone's favorite quotes from the movie and i know laurie metcalf probably has some of the best quotes in the movie chris what is what's one of your favorite quotes from the movie the one i have tattooed on my arm is take a valium like a normal person oh, where wow. is it let me see let me see. i'm just where kidding it? it's not tattooed on my arm oh my god <laughs> i was like get out of here <laughs> I was so oh, down. I should. I totally should. You know, now that I said it, I should. <laughs> yeah, but you put honestly, it out there. That, that line, still to this day, I was just like, boom, that's the one. Gary, let me ask you something. What? Does mm. Roberta have orgasms? I mean, did she have them with you? Orgasms? You have heard of them, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, maybe the reason she left you was because you weren't satisfying? Leslie! 
Not everybody is obsessed with orgasms. Some people just have them. Did she? I well, what? Did Phil Donahue do a show oh, on orgasms? Oh, you are really a pig. You no. know that. At least no. I know about feelings. Feelings. I feel. I feel. Shh. You're disgusting, Gary. You're just like Daddy. No wonder Roberto left you. Would you stop saying that? Gary? Larry. That looks great. Any word from Roberto yet? Fast work, Les. Well, oh, let's have some chicken. The chicken is for tomorrow. Larry. What did the police say? I can't believe the two of you are eating in the middle of a crisis like this. We're nervous. What do you want? Then take a Valium like a normal person. Yeah. I'm not sure if I've told this story on the podcast. And if I did, it was probably a long time ago. But Laurie Metcalf was doing a Broadway show in New York City. And I was on lunch break one day. And I passed by her sitting on a bench near the Broadway theater. And I, all I wanted to do was go up to her and be like, so take a volume like oh a normal God. person. And then just walk Why away. You, do it? you should have done it. <laughs> I, I was like, she would think I was a loon. But uh, I didn't. I just admired her from afar. And I was oh, like, oh, man, oh. YOLO, man, YOLO. <laughs> uh, Liberty, what's one of your favorite quotes from the movie? Uh, there's so many that I really like. Um, but... Used to belong to Jimi Hendrix. I like that. Um, yes. I like uh, Got Any Pot and um, <laughs> pretty much anything that, that comes out of Madonna's mouth, I think, is gold. But, um, yeah. Don't spend, it all, don't spend it all in one place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My God, Susan, I thought you were dead. Just in New Jersey. <laughs> well, I, I think one of my favorites is... is Oh my God, I've heard that four out of five prostitutes are lesbians. <laughs> Leslie, I think I would know if my wife was a lesbian. Why? You didn't know she was a prostitute. <laughs> oh my God, I have heard that four out of five prostitutes are lesbians. Leslie, I think that I would know if my wife was a lesbian. Why? You didn't know she was a prostitute. <laughs> I'm telling you, Laurie Metcalf, she got, I think she gets mostly all of, Gary, she is taking the car keys. <laughs> like, what does she say about me? And she's like, I mean, seriously, like she's gets, she gets all of the fun lines in that movie. She's the best. Yeah. She's the yeah. best. Well, let's talk about fashion because fashion plays a very integral part of this movie. It's almost as if it's another character, you know? So you've got the main plot of the story, and it basically hinges on the fact that Madonna wants a pair of boots, and in order to get that pair of boots, she swaps her jacket, and in the jacket is where she's got the key to get the rest of her stuff. And I love that as a mechanism mm -hmm. for the the plot to advance. You know, like, before we even get to Roberta's amnesia, where people are mistaking her for Susan, the key for the Port Authority locker being put in the jacket, and then the jacket ends up in Roberta's hands. Brilliant. It's just a fun device, and Brilliant. I love that, like, obviously, the jacket is so iconic, like, I love, I, I, somebody gave me this face mask. <gasps> oh, that's nice. Which is the, the pyramid on the, the back of her jacket. Yeah. What did you think of the clothes? Obviously it's eighties fashion goodness. I just read online that, um, they basically went to Madonna's closet and picked out a lot of the shirts that she wore, the, the, the skirts, all the little bangles that she had. I think the gloves were hers. And they were like, yeah, this is perfect. Let's just use these. Because mm -hmm. they didn't have that big of a budget. So they were like, Madonna, whatever you got. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bring it over. What are you not using anymore? Um, <laughs> yeah. And I, you know what? I'll, I'll have to say, because this is part, this is one of the things I think, what I mentioned earlier about having this, I, like I can identify with Roberta, is this thinking about how, you know, when she's going to give, like she's going to take this key back to meet Susan or she's going to get the key to Susan and she has to change her look, right? She doesn't want to be her boring housewife look anymore. She wants to try to look like, uh, you know, like Susan, um, who is looking like Madonna. So, um, it, it, in a funny way, it's almost like it pays homage to this Madonna wannabe craze that was happening right really as the film was being filmed and yeah. and then directly after where everyone is like 
wants to look just like her. Um, and I still go through it when I'm, you know, going and go to a concert or something like that, a Madonna show, I always try to, to dress up and I'm, I'm, and I always feel like the way that as I watched Roberta getting ready the other night, as I watched the movie again, I was like, that's me. I'm trying. I'm so desperate. Like I really want to look, you know, a good look for the show, but I still kind of don't get there. <laughs> like I still kind of just <laughs> put on what I think is the most wild thing I have, you know, coupled with something that's more authentic, like Roberta's got the jacket. Right. But still, right. um, I, I really liked, uh, I like that sort of juxtaposition of this, like you're trying, you want to be just like her, but there's just, you just can't be that because the only person who can really look like that is the person who created the the look, which I guess, and now I don't know because I wasn't there, but da- New York at that time, there were a lot of people looking like that, right? So she didn't necessarily stand out at the time, Madonna, but... Um, it encaps- encapsulates that entire era perfectly. Like if you go to a Halloween store... And you want like a costume from 1985? It's basically the Madonna set. <laughs> yeah, you know, you right. got the gloves, you got the earrings, you got the jacket. It's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm I'm going back for just a second. Um, two other quotes that Mad- I thought Madonna um, did really well with was "Keep the change," uh, and uh, she'll give you the goddamn cab fare. Yeah, uh, <laughs> cab fare. <laughs> Sorry, those yeah. those are gonna yeah. keep the quotes are gonna keep coming to me. Or and it's not a it's not a quote necessarily, but when the cab driver is talking to her about sushi, you know, it was it wasn't so bad. I said I eat this sushi thing. I took it home. I cooked it. It tasted like fish. While she's doing the lipstick, and it's the face which she gives him. Like we've all been there. We've all been in those cabs or those Ubers where it's like the Uber driver is just like talking. And it's just like please just shut up. Yeah. <laughs> um. So the taxi driver. It's this guy named Rockets Red Glare. Do you guys know who that is? No. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> so I looked him up. <laughs> um, he used to hang out with Sid Vicious, who I do know. And apparently he, he was like, he killed somebody? Or uh, he was suspected of killing somebody in the 90s or something like oh, that? So there's before like, or after Desperately Seeking Season? After. Oh, God, after. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's really cool. Hmm. These are little tidbits because you have to you have to think about it like that movie really had it was a vehicle for a lot of other, I think, actors. And and, um, I mean, Madonna specifically, because Susan is such an integral part of who Madonna was and even still is to a certain extent. But it's been a real vehicle for people, you know, who had other um, who who were able to kind of go on and do other things. And uh, for example, Mark Bloom, who I think he recently passed away, uh, but playing Gary Glass, I think all of the people who are in that movie really act very well, given, you know, that maybe some, for example, Madonna playing herself, really, still, there's still some, you know, play there. It's not all 100% just who she is. Well, it's a, it's a true ensemble cast, right. you know, like, I mean, everyone knows that movie as the quote unquote Madonna movie, but I mean, those, you know, Rosanna Arquette, Aiden Quinn, I mean, their chemistry is so fantastic in the movie. And yeah. Aiden Quinn is just like, I was, I had such a crush on Aiden Me Quinn. Too. I was, oh my dreaming. God. He's just so yes. beautiful <laughs> in that movie. And I like, I remember eyes. Like, if you, if you, saw i think i saw the movie on vhs tape i think i had rented it from the local movie store but like if you'd seen it on tv obviously they would cut the part away when the towel drops off of aiden yes. quinn and you see his bare butt <gasps> and when you rent it for the first time you know i think i rented it from like suncoast video and <laughs> it was like i was I, I think i remember just being like <gasps> you know the little the little closeted gay boy even to myself at the time seeing his bare butt i'm like rewinding you know like <gasps> pause <laughs> rewind pause mm-hmm. me as a 20 well, actually i thought it was fun that, like you you get a little bit of like I, like there was some like subtle nudity you know like yeah. you get to see rosanna arquette naked through the fish tank while she's getting dressed and des is watching her with the cat and susan seidelman did a wonderful job at directing and like making all of those people look I mean, they're all young and beautiful already, but like she just makes 
she not only makes the actors look beautiful, she makes the city look beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, it's such a wonderfully shot movie. The cinematography makes everything look great. And the movie is good. I think personally, sorry. I I think it's a, I think they all do a great job. Um, and you know, that it's, it's, there's something so, um, successful about as far as the rom-com aspect, but there's still a little bit of, um, you know, artistic touches. It's not too, you know, silly. It's not, it's not too like, right. It's not campy. Like where they go with like, with who's that girl. So who's that girl is like camp comedy. Whereas desperately seeking Susan, I feel like they have a very fine line of it being, it's very intelligent. You know, Mm -hmm. it's the, the tone that Susan Seidelman stays on is it's equal parts funny but not like sometimes there's not like laugh out loud funny it's just smart funny Mm -hmm. and and I like that they have a really great mix of danger as well because you know you you've got you know this guy stalking Roberta and you're it's only like I love that you sort of like see him in the background every now and again it's like it's almost like a where's Waldo of like there he is at Battery City there he is at the diner Mm -hmm. there you know like where is he and he you know like when he finally gets her and um I loved that scene of Roberta running through the streets of Soho and there's like you would never have that in New York ever anywhere like i can't even i'd be hard pressed to think of a place in manhattan where you'd be able to be that alone with no one around you know like running through the streets i mean it's just it just doesn't exist yeah yeah except well i don't know chris maybe you're running through the streets alone at night i mean uh, well I, i i was actually born and raised in the east village so i was there in the in that neighborhood going to school while she was outside filming this movie and god i just wish i knew now then what i know now i would have i would have called in sick that whole time (laughs) (laughs) um but you could have been an extra oh my god could you imagine um well when i was rediscovering the movie i i think the reason why i wasn't so into it was because i wasn't cool enough to know all of the insider, you know, like all of the actors, like the guy who she wakes up with, um, Bruce Meeker. Bye bye, Bruce. Right. Bruce Han, huh? Apparently he's like this huge guy. His name is Richard, Richard Hell. Um, it's like punk dude. He doesn't have one line nope. in the movie. Oh, and wow. uh, th- there was an article that was like, please give him a movie <laughs> with her as a prequel, you know? Google Desperately Seeking Susan Strawberry Fields. And there's a wonderful article about how much they love Desperately Seeking Susan and how much they love Richard Hell. And I thought I was going to read a little segment of that real quick. I had no idea who, who this guy was. I, I didn't either. I just thought he was like a random extra. I didn't realize he was an actual like he was person. Huge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But in the Strawberry Fields blog, it says, I wished there were a Desperately Seeking Susan prequel starring Richard Hell and Madonna about all the fun they had till he started getting serious. It would correct the one tragedy of the movie, which is that Richard Hell never actually speaks. And along with the Richard Hell prequel, I'd love a coffee table book of Richard Hell and Madonna's Polaroids from Atlantic City. Mostly... I wish the movie were this magical self-regenerating thing where every time you watched, there was a new scene or an entire narrative thread that wasn't there before. I want to go see what Susan got up to in Mexico City and Seattle. I want a very intricate subplot about the neighbor saxophonist and another about the cigarette girl. I want an alternate version of the diner scene in which Des and Roberta actually get to eat their blueberry blintzes. And I'd also love to learn more about the newspaper clerk. Um, (laughs) Chris, you had posed a thought. What would a modern day desperately seeking Susan look like? What, What do you think? Well, um, obviously, it should be two guys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Instead of Roberta and Susan. It'd be Robert and... Stefan. <laughs> yeah, Desp- desperately <laughs> seeking Stefan. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't know. I don't know how it would play out, right? Uh, because in, nowadays, you can find anybody anywhere. 
Um, so it it have to be something like um, like a punk recluse who who like hates modern technology and cannot be found. And um, well, right, because that's the the brilliant thing about that movie is that plot is only feasible because of the time of when it happens. Right, the, they're you know, unable to connect to each other because none of them have landlines. They mm-hmm. don't have cell phones and they're literally just connecting through the personals in a newspaper. Right. And right. so it's, it's very much a victim of circumstance when that movie's happening. I had thought it would be fun, like a modern day desperately seeking Susan. I thought it would have been fun if, if they were ever going to reboot that in any way, it would work really well as like a Netflix series where mm. each episode you could follow a different character from the movie. Mm-hmm. And so you sort of see their plot and what they're doing. And then like every now and again, the characters cross paths. And so you sort of like, it's almost like a passing of the baton and you could maybe use like either the jacket or the port authority key or some sort of like one of the devices that they have in the movie to sort of be the baton that passes off to the, you know, the Egyptian earring, maybe one of the, the Egyptian earring gets placed in somebody else's bag. And I just thought it'd be fun to sort of like each hour you get to see different characters and their backstories. And I love that. I love that idea. And let's get Susan Seidelman to do the um, directing on that. And then we're good to go. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. Copyright, 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 everything. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, uh, that's actually, it's a really fantastic idea because there are a lot of little mysteries in there that, um, could be unraveled or even lead to more. Um, and especially for the time period, I think that for most of us, there is a, a little bit of fantasy attached to that, um, to that era because before technology really like took off, really that's that cusp of time where, you know, we have things like a television and I'm always, I was always fascinated by, um, Susan watching TV by the pool. Cause I was like that. You can't, <laughs> you can't bring a television next to the pool. You'll get electrocuted. Um, Nefertiti. <laughs> No shit. No shit. (laughs) Gary, why didn't you tell me she read the personals? We could have solved this ages ago. Wow, you guys are good. No, I'm telling you, I love this movie. That movie lives rent free in my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's like a bit of fantasy in that era where we're all, um, you know, again, we can connect to each other, but we're all still disconnected. Then also, there's you know that of course, the liveliness of New York City and the promise, right, that we all still think about and fantasize about regarding, especially Madonna's early days. There's a lot of grass is greener in the movie, I think. and um, Totally. Well, and I've always thought it was, you know, something as hokey of of a plot twist as she bangs her head and she loses her, like, she gets amnesia. Like, I always thought that that was such a hokey thing, but yet, and this is a testament to Rosanna Arquette, she does sort of play it where, like, maybe she's just a little confused, where she's like, she, you don't really believe that she maybe has amnesia. I also sort of always felt like maybe Roberta just wants to go with it. You yeah. know, like, she's mm-hmm. a little disoriented at first, and then she's like, this is my chance yeah. to yeah. escape my life. I'm trapped in this unhappy marriage with a guy who's cheating on me in New Jersey and is uh, spocking the spa spocking of New Jersey spocking <laughs> <laughs> glass house. Uh, but you know, and she, he's got an obnoxious sister and she hates her life. And she just, she sees the window of opportunity mm-hmm. and she jumps at it regardless of knowing what's going to happen. She's not as dumb as you think. Yeah. Can we please talk about the soundtrack? Yeah. So obviously the, there, there are two soundtracks that I, that I reference when I say soundtrack, obviously there is the original score uh, by Thomas Newman. It is absolutely brilliant and I love it, but there are also the actual pop music songs that they use in the film. Um, this was early 80s and before movie studios f- thought about marketing their product with a soundtrack with Madonna's new hit, Into the Groove. Okay. They, they just didn't think about that type of stuff back then. So the soundtrack for Desperately Seeking Susan is just the original score by Thomas Newman, which is what 
movies used to do. Uh, and then you would just have to get the songs on the artist's albums or whatever. Um, I mean, other than Into the Groove, which the demo version that they use in that movie is by far the most superior version of that song mm-hmm. ever. I know that it yep. got souped up and reproduced and remastered and they added piano and blah, 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 blah. Meh. I like the Damn and Dirty demo that they use. Um, it's, it is by far the, my, it is the, the definitive version of that song. Always has been, always will be. Um, I think the next song I love, we played this as the pre-show music before we came on the air, J.R. Walker's cover of Urgent, which opens the film. Mm. It's just brilliant, and it's I awesome. think I love it more than Foreigner's original. Shh, don't, don't tell Foreigner. Uh, but <laughs> what, are, what are some of your other standouts? Because there's a ton of music in that, in that movie. What, what, what are some of the other standouts? Liberty, I'm sure you had an eagle ear. Oh, gosh. Um, so my favorite song, actually, is in that scene where she's walking, um, trying on the new boots or the new to her boots at the resale store. What? Man, I got to have them. But 65 bucks, that's the price. <laughs> and she trades her, her amazing jacket for those. I, I wish. Yeah, I bet Jimi Hendrix would love it if I traded for I the boots. boots. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah, respect. It's a good anthem while she's walking back and forth. And I think probably one of my favorite, favorite moments in the film is when Roberta is literally just stalking her. I mean, it's she's just following Susan around that day, mm-hmm. and she winds up in the store with her. She's pretending to shop, but she's just watching and observing what Susan's doing. And I don't know if... Ma- not Madonna. I don't know if Susan was supposed to be aware of her or if she was just, like, looking. But that stare that Madonna gives Rosanna Arquette that side eye glance is heaven. Mm. It is like perfect side eye glance. And I just, I've always loved that moment. Which, so, and yeah. of course it ends up with um, Roberta fumbling with all the hangers. Cause that would be me. If Madonna would look at me at all, I'd be like, <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, what yep. are some other songs that we love? Well, I have a fun fact. Oh yes. So the cigarette girl, her name is Anne Magnuson, mm-hmm. I think. Um, she's the one in the Magic Club. She's always struck me as somebody who I would love to just have a conversation with. Apparently, she was in this movie called Making Mr. Right, who was also directed by Susan Seidelman, who yes. shares the soundtrack to Desperately Seeking Susan. Yes. It's weird that they did that back in the 80s, that it was like, we don't believe that Thomas Newman's original score is enough to sell a, a soundtrack. Yeah. So we're going to put it with another <laughs> We're going to couple it with another movie. How about that? Uh, I mean, obviously we had Shoop Shoop song is playing over the, the salon number with, Hi, Renee. Renee, just give her something different. Carly what are Simon. Some of the other songs? The oh, Carly you Simon. belong to me. We have that Marshall Crenshaw song, mm-hmm. Someday, Someway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's lots of... Did you mention Iggy Pop? I think Iggy Pop was in there. What a killer soundtrack that would be if they had put that out back then in 1985. Yeah. Like, yeah. Obviously, it would have been led by the Into the Groove demo. It would just would have been amazing. I don't know. I mean, I've seen them together. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, That's also one of my favorite scenes. I love when Madonna is dancing, trying... And Gary Glass is trying to have this like serious conversation because his wife is missing. And... She just is like, I just want to dance, you know? She keeps and disappearing and weird people pop up. It's so the hysterical. Guy, the, bl- the bald guy who, like, yeah. does this, like, weird side-to-side <laughs> dancing is br- so fun. You I, again, me out. Like, so, again, like, if there was a Netflix series, like, he would have an episode, you know? Yeah. Like, or yeah. not even an episode, just, like, a couple scenes where he's, like, we go, like he dances with Susan and then he goes off and then we follow <laughs> him and, you know, it, it would just be so much fun. They could do so much with that. It's a um, rabbit hole. Yeah, totally. I do want to talk about, uh, before we, be, before we wrap things up, cause we could literally just keep talking and talking and talking ad nauseum about the movie. Um, Chris, you're a bit of a merch collector and you've got mm. some really interesting, desperately seeking Susan merch. Tell us about that. 
Um, well, I only have, you know, the typical stuff. Like the I jacket. Have, You've got you bought the jacket from I the wish. Smithsonian. <laughs> no, you know, I went I looked up how much that jacket is online right now. It's going for fifteen hundred dollars. It's a that's promo it? a, it's a promo jacket. I mean, there's several out there, I'm sure, but that's a lot. Do you think that's a lot for just a merch? Mm, no. I don't think well, if it was the authentic <laughs> if it was the authentic jacket, I would say yeah. that's a bargain. But I don't right, think I don't think that's I think it. they had the two jackets, <laughs> hers and the one that they made for Rosanna Arquette, and I think I'm pretty sure they're both in museums. Oh yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I have a heart shaped into the groove picture disc. I have the promo poster. Um, the one thing I texted you is these three Madonna action figures that i, I bought them. a couple they're of like years RP ago dolls they're amazing <laughs> they're awesome and the one that i love is the shirt that she's wearing in one of the action figures is actually madonna's shirt the one with the mc on it yeah, oh yes that one that's madonna that's madonna Ciccone. right yeah which it's I the had scene no idea. it's the scene when her with susan and crystal sitting on that sofa on the outside of the magic club which has always freaked me out because after living in new york city and yes. knowing about bed bugs <laughs> you do not sit on any furniture that is on the side of the street Amen. because of bed bugs and ev- i know that that was probably not an issue at the time but every time i see them sitting on that sofa i'm always like oh my god there's bed bugs in that sofa yep 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 oh it's so man gross. i don't believe it some witch steals my stuff and you get fired i always love <laughs> how she says movie. fired She's Let's go see a movie, movie, double feature. My treat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but how much is popcorn? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you have a place? Mm, not exactly, but I'm working on it. Oh, oh no, I know what this means. Oh, just one night. My uh, God, you guys could rewrite the entire script. That's incredible. <laughs> and I'm not even doing it word for word. It's just off. It's just poor memory. Um, Wait, so you don't have the Nefertiti earrings? No, no gloves? No boots? What? What? No. I thought I'm, you had a whole I'm look. Saving up. I'm saving up for a house. I can't. I can't, <laughs> I can't buy all that stuff online anymore. I can't. I do have it. a really amazing, and I don't even remember where I got it at this point. I have this amazing, desperately seeking Susan tapestry, and it's uh, it's um, it's huge. It's got to be like. Uh, I mean, it's like it could fill a wall. It's enormous. And it's a picture of her wearing the jacket, like just like a headshot of Susan. Uh, wow. Uh, and, her, and it's beautiful. And um, nice. I pr- could probably sell it for a, a little bit of cash. But uh, <laughs> speaking of, yeah, down payment for a house? Sure, I'll sell my Desperately Seeking <laughs> Susan tapestry. Here you go. <laughs> hey, Stefan, I think it's time for my favorite part of the podcast. Is it? Is it? Are we desperately seeking a lightning round? Ooh, what's that? Oh, stop it. Chris, you know as a (laughs) listener of the show that every guest on the podcast gets a little something we call the lightning round. It's just something it's meant to be quick off the top of your head, wherever you're at in your Madonna journey today. Don't think too hard. Favorite Madonna song? Mm. As you, oh as, God, you, sorry, as you was... swig on your Evian bottle, <laughs> sorry that was that was poor timing. You, Chris was deep throating an Evian bottle exactly as I asked him that. Let's we'll start over again. Favorite That's Madonna song? Well, uh, um, uh, uh, Future Lovers, Ooh. but also Crazy for You. Ooh. Okay, you can only really you're not only supposed to say one. No, well, 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 you know it's Madonna. You can't Let's just, just have rattle one. off her catalog. You can't uh, have one. You can't have just one. The crazy for you is because it was our our first dance song at our wedding. So, oh, your that husband holds a special, yeah. Oh, it's our first. That's so. sweet that you have a Madonna. Not many gays I know like attach Madonna to their wedding songs. I mean, it's crazy for you. It's yeah, the best hello. song. It's amazing. It's the best song ever. Um, oh, and to, to clarify, sorry, we're interrupting your lightning round for this very important announcement. To clarify, we are not saying that Desperately Seeking Susan is Madonna's first movie. Obviously, we know there was a certain sacrifice. We know she was in uh, uh, Vision was Quest. Vision Quest, thank you. Uh, so obviously, it was not her first. But in terms of like the definitive Madonna movies, 
that's because she's been Susan. It's the first time she was actually a lead actor in a movie. Mm-hmm. That's right. So, uh, in a Hollywood film. So, uh, favorite Madonna tour? Uh, oh, Confessions. Mm-hmm. Confessions. Hey, but also, man. <laughs> girly show. <laughs> yeah, you can't go. You can't go wrong there either. I mean, I mean, uh, you can. I can't pick just one. It's like a favorite child. Tr- this is this is true. Uh, favorite Madonna movie. We already know it's not Desperately Seeking Susan. Evita, Evita. <laughs> she should have won the Oscar. I'm just saying mm-hmm. it. That's all. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, she should have won the Oscar just based off of how good she looked at the fucking Golden Globes. Mm-hmm. Amen. I mean, I mean her Globes on. were golden. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, she they looked were. so good at the Golden Globes. And it was, yeah, it was mm-hmm. a crime that she didn't get that Oscar. Who won? I don't see. We don't even remember. Who cares? Who cares? That ship has sailed. Yeah. Favorite Madonna look, and this can be from a, a video, a tour, a photo shoot, in person. Oh, uh, well, you know, in person doesn't lie, right? Um, so my favorite era of her look is Ray of Light, but also erotica. <laughs> but also... God, <laughs> I just love her in Beautiful Stranger, uh, the video. Oh, that oh entire God. get up so and her good. outfit and her abs. Mm. Oh, come on. A dearly on. departed friend of mine always said if he was ever going to come back as a woman, he would come back as Madonna in the Beautiful Stranger video. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It just, oh, so gorgeous. Oh, the smoky eye, the hair, she, her. Her skin is so dewy and mm. she just like her her body is just so tight and like mm. she I love that she gave us that look for a one off song from an Austin Powers soundtrack. Like And and that's how I dance in clubs now because of her. You know, correct. this whole like this that whole is correct. Thing. That is the correct way to dance <laughs> in a in a club. If oh, if man. we're privy enough to go to her pride party. That is how we are going to be dancing. Yep. Yeah. If there's Amen. any room in that room, goodness gracious, it's going to be. <laughs> like- dun, 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 dun. Well, no, actually, there's two proper ways to dance, uh, and when you go to a club, like Susan at Danceateria in in Desperately Seeking Susan, nice, or nice like circle. Madonna in the Beautiful Stranger video. So, Funny yep. that you say that because in Desperately Seeking Susan, there's a there's a little personal at the very beginning. Roberta's reading, uh, and it says there's a title. It says Beautiful Stranger. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You wonder if that's where Madonna got the idea. I do. Oh. I do. <laughs> mm. Interesting. Yes, and I always did love that in the very beginning of that movie, the first time you see Madonna, she's taking a selfie on a Polaroid. And I loved, I mean, infinitely loved that she brought that back for her mm-hmm. Madame X tour and was constantly just, like, taking selfies on Polaroids. Like, it was such a wonderful f- full circle moment that I don't... Because there weren't cameras at that show, people couldn't appreciate it because you, unless you were there, you didn't see it. Mm-hmm. And, of course, if you couldn't afford the Polaroid, you didn't get to see the Polaroids. But, uh, yeah, I just... I always loved that she sort of, like, had this relationship with Polaroids. Yeah. 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 I agree. Missed, so missed the whole marketing. thing is iconic. Mm-hmm. Oh, totally. Again... If that was today, Polaroid would have been a sponsorship. It would have been a Madonna or Desperately Seeking Susan branded Polaroid camera that would have gone out. Um, you know, I mean, like, trademark, trademark, trademark. Well, when they, when they, when Netflix finally listens to this episode and they were like, "Oh my God, we should reboot Desperately Seeking Susan," <laughs> that's what will happen. So you heard it here, folks. You heard it. Here, you heard it here first, folks. Um, <laughs> Are there any other tidbits? I think I feel feel like there's a couple other tidbits that we could just shout them out. Anything, Chris? Um, did you, you, had, talk you had, about you the had John a little Travolta. laundry list of things? Did you talk about the John Travolta and Madonna walking down the street was just the most iconic thing to happen to movies? It wasn't quite as stratastic as John Travolta, but um, I would, but you know that, you know, what, what was she eating? What was she those eating? Cheese puffs. Those cheese, cheese puffs. Cheese puffs. And if, again, With gloves. if <laughs> anyone wants to go on my New York City Madonna walking tour, uh, 
you will be required to eat a bag of cheese puffs as we walk down St. Mark's Place. Um, yes. Just so you know. So plan your I diet mean. accordingly. Um, <laughs> It, it is, it's a whole lot of fun. Trust me, I have the whole walking tour planned out. I just need to get certified so that I won't get arrested. Um, oh, 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 I have one. I have one. Did you know there's an alternate ending? Uh, yeah, of course. I think I saw that. It's not, is it on the DVD? I have the DVD. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then I have Do you know what it is? I can't remember now. <laughs> they, uh, apparently, they, the girls ride off on a camel. Oh, right. Yes. I, I do remember that. Yeah. Weird. So. I was like, no way. When I read it, I'm like, there's no way. And then I found the clip and you can tell Madonna was like, you brought me back to film me on a camel. Are you serious right now? <laughs> well, I think that was the, that was meant to be the original ending, but I believe they, in a test screening, it didn't go well. And so that they had, the, the ending that we now see, uh, the original, yeah. the, the, the actual movie in the, sorry, the ending that's in the movie. Right, right. I just thought that was really funny. Well, that's our show for today. Thank you so much for joining everybody. It's such a nice time to meet you. I'm so excited. Yeah, Chris, thanks for joining us today for this fun little chat about uh, that little movie that could in 1985. And remember, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at MLVC Podcast. You can also donate to the podcast on Venmo at MLVC Podcast. Also think about becoming a subscriber. Patron.podbean.com forward slash MLVC Podcast. Liberty, Chris, thank you so much for today. This is a lot of fun. This is so fun. Thank you, thank you so much. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you, guys. See ya. Bye. Bye. Susan! Oh, Susan, uh, don't get the wrong idea. She was helping me find Roberta. Susan, what are you doing here? I got good news and bad news. What do you want to hear first? You said you were going to leave. Okay, good news first. Your wife isn't partners with the grease ball. Susan, my wife has just been picked up on the Lower East Side, escaping from her gun-toting pimp. He's not a pimp. He's not a pimp. He's not a pimp. Yeah. The bad news is that he's probably going to kill her because he thinks she's me. Gary, why didn't you tell me she read the personals? You could have settled this yesterday. She, she read them all the time. I, I, I didn't think... Yeah, well, I, I, fortunately I, for everybody, I'm here and I'm thinking. Give me the car keys. I'll bring it right back. Hiya. Gary, she is taking... The car keys. Shut up, Leslie. Okay. Diary. That little snake, what'd she say about me?